Good morning and welcome to Wellness Wednesdays. I'm April Benitolo, CEO at Momentum. And we are so glad that you are here and very excited about the session this morning. So for those of you who are joining us for the first time, welcome. And if you would like to see some of the other sessions that we've done, um, either for the Wellness Wednesdays series or for our Intentional Tuesdays series that we ran before this one, you can see those on our YouTube channel and Allie is gonna post the link to that channel so that um, you can go back and watch and or listen to um, all of the recordings that we have there. So I do wanna thank all of our sponsors for helping us out all through the years. So they sponsor not just this webinar series, but all of our programs and all of our classes. And we just wouldn't be able to do what we do at Momentum without these partner companies. So we are very, very grateful to them and thank them for all of their support. And as I um, introduce our speaker today, I would love it if all of you would take a minute and locate your chat down in the bottom of your Zoom toolbar and just give us a little idea about what brought you here today. Are you looking to reconnect with your spiritual side? Are you, um, do you feel stressed and disconnected and are just kind of curious about how today's session might help? And for sure, if you are here for the first time, if you wouldn't mind letting us know that in the chat, you can either um, type that in to everyone or you can send it just to me, April Benitolo, and let us know how you, like where you work and how you found out about the webinar today. So we'll be, uh, we'll be taking a glance at those chat messages. I only see two responses so far. So we're looking to know what brought you here today. All right, let me introduce our spiritual teacher, guide, and guest speaker for today. Terry, thank you so much for volunteering to join us. We are very grateful. Yes. Um, Terry Hyman is an interfaith minister of spiritual counseling. She's an intuitive coach, a Reiki teacher, and just an amazing, amazing woman. She helps women to reconnect with their spiritual side, with their inner intuition, some of those things that we lose sometimes when we get kind of crazy in life. And I can attest to Terry's programs firsthand because um, I, think, I think it was at one of the BBJ's mentoring Mondays that we, we crossed paths again. Uh, and Terry just mentioned her Empowered Spirit program to me. And I said, wow, that sounds like something that I really need. I felt like I had become very disconnected from a, a kind of spiritual side that I knew existed when I was younger and I let life sort of encroach and take over and and I just felt kind of called to reconnect to that so I signed up and the very coincidental thing was I started going to her sessions once a week and then I found out after about two or three weeks that Andrea McCaskey from our office was also doing the same program at the same time so that was hysterical um, but we we both enjoyed getting to learn about all the different modalities modalities excuse me for connecting with that spiritual side because different things work for different people so um just very much looking forward to having terry go through some of those things with us today terry has been interviewed by abc tv she has written a book on shower tapping Secrets of a Shower Tapper. Is that the name of it, Terry? Confessions <laughs> of a Shower Tapper, which is the of a Shower Tapper. And it is available on Amazon. Yeah. Um, Terry can share all that information with you when, uh, when we conclude the webinar today. Um, she's also available to do individual sessions in, in Reiki and intuitive readings and Akashic readings and um, mentoring, mentoring through reconnecting with your spiritual side. So Terry, thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Looking forward to hearing what you have to say. Yes, thank you. Thank you, women. You guys are awesome. You're amazing. And I have to say, I've enjoyed connecting with the YouTubes. I watched a few of them myself and 
I love the meditations at the beginning. I love the, the talk on mindfulness. So exactly what we need today, especially. And coming from women leaders like you guys, I love it. I see, I love that it's coming in and doing, starting out your meetings and how you work with everybody. So very grateful to be here and share. Got to talk a little differently today than some of my normal modalities because I really wanted to talk about practical spirituality. So starting with the question of like, what is spirituality? So just think to yourself, if you want to put any notes in the chat, you can, but what is spirituality? It really is a broad concept, right? And there are lots of perspectives that we can look at, but really what I like to talk about is that it really includes a connection with yourself to something bigger, something bigger than yourself. And it typically involves a search for meaning in your own life. All right, and what else I like to talk about is that spirituality pulls your energy in. It doesn't send you like out there searching for all those many things. It pulls your energy in. And it really helps you to recognize what is going on in all the many different levels that we work with. The emotional body, the physical body, the mental body, right, our minds. And when we connect that, that's where we get into that spiritual body that we all have, all right? And I always talk about the energy body just because we can't see it doesn't mean it's not there. Just like we have those cell phones now, we don't see all those energy things coming in, but we know it works. The same with all of us. We all have this energetic body that helps us connect to that spiritual body within each of us. And really today, if you take a poll and you look at it, you're going to see that there is a big increase in spirituality. A regular spiritual practice is going to help you find more wellness within your own self. It's going to increase your compassion. It's going to help you focus your mind and really quiet all that chatter. It really does give you time to reflect. It's going to give you time to heal from all the many experiences. And goodness gracious, we all know this year has been one of those years that we need extra tools in our life. It can really give you that courage to help you fulfill your dreams, to move forward in your potential and all that you want to do. It really can just benefit your life in so many ways. So why practical? Because I believe when we have these practical tools, we can use them on a daily basis. We don't have to go off to an ashram. We don't have to go to weeks of yoga training, although yoga is great. We don't have to go away anywhere to use these tools. We don't have to hide it in our meditation corner, but we can bring it out and we can use it on a daily basis, at our desk, at work, wherever we're going to just take a moment and pause and stop. So when we find that we have these practical tools for spirituality, we can use them on a daily basis. Also what I call spiritual literacy, all right? We can hear about it all day long, but it's the actual practice that is going to help you understand and really get into the work of it. So what is your spiritual practice? If I was to ask maybe a little show of hands, how many people have a spiritual practice? Although I see everybody has got their face off. So how many people have a spiritual practice? Like think about it for a moment, all right? All right, we have some hands coming up. Excellent, excellent. Don't say you don't have one. All right, because we all have one, whether it's just sitting quietly, whether it's praying, whether it's reflecting, whether it's taking some deep breaths, going for a walk, we all have one. But it's recognizing those practices and then building upon it and training your ability to get to that place for yourself, right? So I think that you can take a moment during your day. You can close the door. You can do some deep breaths. Get yourself into a more focused situation. And what I like to teach with my intuitive students is notice your energy. Is this your energy or is this somebody else's? All too often, we pick up everybody else's energy and we're really not aware of it. So there are tools that you can learn, tools that you can practice that's going to help you understand a lot of this better, that's going to raise your vibration and regular things that you can do very easy, very simply. And the beautiful part is that it relaxes you. It changes your brain. It puts you into this nice, nice, very well relaxation mode that helps you to really come about life in a different manner. So my story, my story goes back to the late 90s, all right? I was living in New York. I had two small children. I was super busy. I was making jewelry. I had just gotten brand new jewelry contracts with Eileen Fisher stores. They were opening up in New York City, and I was going to be their holiday item. I made these little beaded bags. Amazing, right? I was too busy for my life. 
one morning, my husband walked in and he said, I'm in love with another woman. And in that moment, I finally stopped. I knew something was going on, but I wasn't paying attention. I was just too busy. But I stopped. It felt like the world was spinning around me. And I actually heard myself say, who am I? Where have I been? Who have I been listening to? Not me. And that thought actually changed my life. Now, obviously, divorce did, whole other story. But that thought, like, who had I been listening to, sent me on a search. Sent me on a search to learn more about my own spiritual self. It sent me on a search to really start to say, why was I not paying attention? And I began to learn. I began to study. I began to change my life. I began to do all of this work that helped me to recognize that was my spirit. That was my spirit talking to me that I had been way too busy. It cost me a lot, but I learned a lot in the process as well. And so now, fast forward 20-something years later, here I am with all of this information, all of these tools and this practice back here in Birmingham, Alabama. It's actually where I grew up, teaching other women how to tap into that part of themselves, how to understand the ways in which we can learn to train that inner guidance, ways that we can learn to trust the gut. And that's really what we want to do. We want to learn how to do this for ourselves. And by using a spiritual practice, we can find that for each and every one. We really can. So when I came back to Birmingham, not many people understood what I was doing, right? They had no idea. She's a what I heard all the time. So I kept going like, what am I doing here? Why am I here? Now, I was lucky to have some land that my dad had. It was like a farm. And I was out there on the weekends and I would be sitting at this little fire circle going, what am I doing? What am I doing? Why am I here? What is going on? And I would just come out there and I would notice how much better I felt in my life connecting with Mother Earth, connecting with nature. And so I began to pick up rocks. I began to move an awful lot of rocks. And I began to create what is known as a medicine wheel. And the reason I'm sharing this now is because when COVID hit, I found myself asking those same questions. What am I doing? What is going on with the world? And it was going back to this land and asking over and over. So I want to show you a few of these pictures that where I started from, because it's also a way in which you can look at your own life too, step by step. So often we're in a hurry to get to the final destination. So you see, it's just a bunch of rocks. And then I started picking them up with wheelbarrow. I didn't even have a wheelbarrow at first. And I started laying them into a configuration. So you see the sacred circle. I work a lot in sacred circles. It holds a lot of space. And so I kept moving rocks. And I learned about the concept of course correct. All right, so often we go down a path and we think, oh my gosh, I've wasted so much time. Nothing is working out. But with the rocks, it showed me that if I just move a rock one way or the other, push it back in line, the ripple effect starts to happen. And I started noticing that parallel in my life. And so I started building what is known as a medicine wheel. Our indigenous cultures use them. They represent a wheel of life. And so as you see, it kept growing and it kept growing and it kept growing. And I kept building more rocks and bringing more rocks in until finally the whole wheel was created. So if you just take a moment and look at this picture, you see that it is a representation of the wheel of life. It's a representation of all of the many things that we do on a daily basis and a yearly basis as well. Life has changed, nothing ever stays the same, and really finding ways that we can connect with the greater energy is going to help you reduce that worry and that stress that we tend to get ourselves involved with. So as I began to work with this, one of the teachings that comes about is that the wheel of life represents the seasons of our life. And with each season is a direction. And with each direction, holds different energies and different vibrations and different ways for us to go about the year that we live in. Now, the beautiful thing is that the medicine wheel is circular. We're so used to our calendars being linear, right? We turn the page over, turn the page over, we go like this. But with the medicine wheel, it reminds us that everything is always moving. And if we look at even the COVID situation, we're still moving through change. We're still moving through transition. How can we best do that? We keep shifting the rocks. We keep moving our energy. 
So when we find ourselves able to get outside and connect with the energy of the earth, we can find that spiritual practice really, really easy. And as we look at this wheel of life, here it is. We notice that there is directions, the north, the east, the south, and the west. This is this summer. The summer was absolutely beautiful. So green, you notice the weather, you notice how you feel. You notice that things are still moving, things are still growing. So if we take that representation and we look at the directions for ourselves, you can see that we have each of the directions laid out. The spring is in the east, the summer is in the south, the fall is in the west, and the winter is in the north. And then we have the ability to also understand where we are on that path and each of the sacred elements of life come in. So the sacred elements of life, as we look to now, here's the summer, absolutely beautiful. One of the most prettiest summers ever we've ever seen up there. The grass is green, which like, that's like abundance. That's like hard energy. This is the universe talking to us, yet we've all been through so much stress. We've all been through so much change. When we get outside in nature, We've all heard that the world has been going through a great exhale with COVID and the earth is healing. We've heard a lot of this. It is so true. So when we connect with our feet on the earth and we go through times like this, it reminds us that everything is temporary. We're going to all move through this. Our spirit is going to come back around. But if we stay in the chatter of the mind, like, oh my God, nothing's the same. I can't go to work. I can't see people. I don't know what I'm doing. We just get caught up in that chatter of the mind. So when we start to work with all these different elements and bring in the seasons, we can allow ourselves to find balance. So when we work with the sacred elements and notice that each of the directions hold these, we talk about a few elements. I use it as an acronym for air, fire, earth, and water. Everything is made up of these sacred elements in life. So when we start to use this acronym, a few, the air, fire, earth, and water, we can start to understand where our life is out of balance. So let's just break it down a little bit and go through each of the elements and see. So A, air. Air is your breath. It's your thoughts. It's your mindset. And it's your meditations into your spirit. So as you think about air right now in your own life, have you done your breathing? Are you doing meditation? Is your mind too cluttered with all of that self-talk from yesterday that you wake up hearing again and again? Are you using meditation to help you listen to your spirit? That is the element of air. So maybe on any given day, you may say, oh my gosh, my mind is just out of sorts. We return to that element of air. We take some deep breaths. We offer the meditation that we need and we find that we find a little more balance especially in that mental plane. Fire. Fire is our passion. It's our desires. It's the energy chakras of who we are, and it's the exercises in our life. Fire is what fuels our ability to have the inspiration, to put our work out there, to stand up for who we are, and to stand up for what we believe in. So on any given day, you can notice, I don't have much energy. I don't feel very well. This is also where all that energy work that I teach, the Reiki, the tapping, the pranic healing, the crystals, the light, all of that energy work comes in to help lift your vibration. Now you can also do it through hiking, through yoga, through walking, any of the exercises that really gets the body fired up, pumping, so that you can trust your instincts, you can trust the passions that you wanna bring forward in your own life. That's the element of fire. Then we have earth. Earth is our work. It's that physical manifestation of all that we do. It's our money. It's also our food, what we eat, how we digest our lives. It's also the groundedness, how we ground ourselves to the earth and also our community. Are we in relationship to our community? And I know right now, a lot of us, I was talking about this before, feel a little bit maybe out of sorts with the community because we're not getting out as much. So finding the extra measures to help us connect is really important right now. So work and your pentacles, your money, your abundance, that's all in the element of air. Water. Water is our emotions, right? It's how we feel. It's that fluidity in life. Fluidity. That's a big word right now, right? Being going with the flow, going with all the changes. It's also the water we drink. Water is what helps us to process our energy and process our emotions on a daily basis. 
That's the element of water. So when we have all of these elements around us, we can connect with the spirit. We can connect with our inner guidance. We can find ourselves more centered. We can use our intuition and call in that higher self of who we are. So on a daily basis, if you take that wheel and you say, what is wrong with me? All right, how many people have that on a daily basis? What is wrong? What am I not seeing? Why do I feel out of balance? You can take the little wheel and ask yourself, all right, did I drink my water today? Are my emotions flowing or am I stuck? And are those emotions stuck in the chatter of my mind? So you might have to do a little bit of grounding. You might have to use your breath. I actually personally think breath can go in all of the circles there. But we can use this to help us understand what have I forgotten? Did I not eat right today? All right, am I not grounding my energy? All right, am I not finding that exercise or that way to fuel up my own fire to be inspired by my life? So when we use this, a few elements, it can remind you on a daily basis to come back into balance and to have a way to really tap into what it is that is missing or out of sorts for you. Now, when we combine this with the seasonal energy of the medicine wheel, we have a way of really understanding where we are right now. All right, we're in the midst of transitions. This was just from this weekend being out there. We're starting to see the changing of the colors. We're starting to prepare the medicine wheel, clean up, pull the weeds, line the rocks, and noticing the difference. The West, the energy of the West is where we find fall. And fall is all about it's all about the abundance in our life. It's all about the harvesting of all the work we've done all year. It's the thanksgiving and especially the gratitude. We also have the energy when fall of starting to like, like get rid of the old energy, get rid of the old wood, right? Like the leaves that we, we rake away, like turning them back into the earth. So that is the energy of fall. So as we move through this transition, you can ask yourself, where am I in this energy? Am I ready to move into this next step? I know for me, I love summer. My birthday's in the summer. And I always have a little bit of, I don't want to give up summer. I don't want to give up summer. But if I hold on to that, don't want to give up summer, don't want to give up, what is that going to do? It's going to hold my energy back. It's going to drown me in my own, uh, own inability to move forward. But when I recognize, okay, here we are summer. I can take the time to honor where I are, am, to let it go. I can step into that new season and really prepare my energy and my work to harvest all the many things that fall will bring forward for us. So just in your own self, like, are you ready for fall? We have what, like two weeks left? Because we're really actually still in late summer. And actually some traditions consider late summer a season in its own self. I know for me right the end of summer, I don't wanna give it up. I'm a little ragged feeling, I'm hot, I'm tired. So that's why we take some time reflecting on where we are, looking at the elements, adding in that more water for me, and just really being able to prepare myself to cross that line because the medicine wheel has those directional markers to move into the new season. So fall is where we're moving into, right? Harvest, gratitude, connecting with the abundance in your life and your work, community, and Thanksgiving. These are the things that we start to work with. We don't necessarily want to start like planning new ideas or bringing in new projects. We want to work on what has grown from the summer and really harvest that energy for us. That's how we work in alignment with the seasons. Winter is the one after, and that's in the direction of the north. Winter is our dream time. It's going within. It's the hibernation. It's connecting with that spirit world, our ancestors. And it's really those deep, deep meditations to bring forward dreams and visions for your life. Direction of the north. Then we have spring. Spring is actually where the medicine will begin. Spring is where sun comes up each and every day. It's the new beginnings. It's the sunrise. It's planting your seeds. It's having that hope that, yes, life comes around each and every day as do you and as does your own work. And then summer. Summer is the season we've just finishing up now. Summer is where we have growth. We have the patience to help in our own life, or we at least try to find the patience to allow the energy and all that you planted in the spring to grow, to nourish, to flourish. And we also have fun. And we have that wild woman, divine feminine energy that always comes forward in the summer in the direction of the South. So here is the medicine wheel. It's a beautiful 
representation of all of this life that I've been talking about. And if you actually came out here, you can actually walk it. But you can also have one in my backyard, a smaller one. You can actually use it as picture representation. There's many things that you can do with it. But for me, it's a way to connect with each of the seasons and to know where we are in any given moment. Am I out of alignment? Am I working against it? Do I need to just course correct a few of the stones to find that way that I can work and bring my spirit forward with all the work that I am doing at this time? Every season, we have the opportunity to reset our energy. Every day, we have the opportunity to use a few elements to help us find that balance in our life. Air, your breath for your mindset. Fire, your energy to inspire your actions. Earth, your grounding and your gratitude. Water is your flow of emotions. So when you find yourself out of balance on any given day, remember these elements and just check in with yourself and find a way to bring your own energy back into alignment. So I thought I would offer, trying to stop sharing, a meditation. There we go, thank you. So I thought I would see if, first of all, are there any questions, but second of all, to offer a meditation so that we can take the energy of summer, release it out and prepare ourselves to move forward into the fall energy. Questions? Shall I move on, April? Let's move on to the meditation and that way it will give people some time Excellent. To think about their questions. All right. All right. So wherever you are, if you can, close your eyes. I'm going to light a little sage. Taking a nice deep inhale, allowing the belly to expand, and just bring that energy all the way up the body. And as you exhale, bring that breath all the way back down deep into the earth. Taking a nice deep inhale. And exhale. And again, inhaling up the body. And exhale, sending that breath all the way back down. Calling in your higher self calling in your spiritual body. Just feel that alignment coming right on top of the physical body, pulling your energy in, pulling it in, inhaling, and exhaling. As we take this time to honor where we are, right here in this very present moment, we find ourselves in the late summer energy. So we look to the medicine wheel, this wheel of life. We find ourselves in the direction of the summer. Well, we've been growing our work. We've been allowing it to blossom, to flower. We've been looking at all the many aspects that go into what we planted in the spring. We've been enjoying the water, the fun of life allowing ourselves to open up, to get a little wild during the summer as we bring all of these many things forward. So taking a moment of reflection as you look to your summer, going back to June when we started out the summer solstice, and just honoring Honoring all that you've grown. Honoring the things that have come forward. Honoring your own garden of life. And just take a moment 
and recognize the things that weren't working, the things that you can let go and leave in that summer season, the things that need a little course correcting, the projects, the work, the details that no longer are part of your path. And we just let that energy go. No need to carry it forward. Take a nice deep inhale. And exhale. Just letting that energy go. Energy follows intention, sending it away. Inhaling and exhaling. As you let go of what no longer serves, allow that which is working, all those many things to come forward for you. And just embody that energy. All of those many things that you're growing, that you're happy about, that summer has offered you. And allow this energy now to step forward into the new season. Imagine stepping over that path, right into the energy of fall, which we find in the direction of the West. As you step through clear and alive with this energy, what can you harvest? What can you have gratitude for in your life right now? Where is that abundance coming forward for you? Take a nice deep inhale and exhale. How can you ground with your community, sharing in this Thanksgiving, this energy of gratitude and abundance, sharing in that compassion? In the West, we find the sunsets. We find those beautiful colors that remind us of the work we've done for that day. We honor this new season as we step into it strong, grounded, and ready. Take a nice deep inhale and exhale. As we call in all of the directions for guidance and protection to the east, the south, the west, and the north, above us, below us, right into the very center, calling into your spirit. And now setting an intention for this season for you. And right into that third eye center, see this intention coming in. See all the many signs, the symbols, the details. And as you see these intentions coming forward, notice how you feel. How will you feel as this energy comes forward for you? More peace, more joy, more abundance, happier, and embody those emotions. Feel them fully. And then allow those emotions to radiate out, just sending them out from your heart all around you. Release the attachments so that you can allow your energy to flow to for spirit to help bring this in for you. Just radiate out that energy. Take another deep breath. Holding on to those emotions, radiating them out. Feeling all of that gratitude and abundance for this season. So that you can be present to your own life, to the work that you have, to Mother Earth, to your community, with all these many blessings. using these sacred elements of life to find that balance for yourself. Take 
taking another deep inhale and exhale. And just start to bring your awareness back. Feeling yourself connected with the earth under your feet. Just taking a moment and noticing how you feel. Coming back. How are we doing? So this is how we use the wheel of life. This is how we use the elements to find that balance, to connect on a daily basis at any given moment where you are. Terry, thank you so much. That was amazing. I think, um, Maybe some of our people that have been coming to the Wellness Wednesdays for several sessions might have been wondering, where's the voice of Andrea McCaskey doing a meditation this morning? Why did they skip that part? Well, we skipped it because we knew Terry had this coming at the end. So thank you. Thank I'm you. I'm wondering thank too, you. actually. <laughs> we got in our meditation and Andrea got to participate instead of leading it this time. So thank you for that. Um, if you have questions for Terry, now is that time. We have, um, we have a little bit of time for her to respond. So any questions that you may have on her practice or how to uh, get, I see Joy says, what are the next steps for exploring further? Yeah, great question, Joy. How are you? So there are many ways that you can explore further. I have, I have actually a great um, boot camp coming up next week, a free program that is going to teach you all about your empathic energy versus intuition. It's, a, it's on my Facebook group and you just have to join and come in every day, 6 p.m. So I'll be going over all of these ways that you can really start to understand your own energy and how you process energy, because that is definitely very key, especially in a world that we're all in, especially as women, that empath energy is really huge. But really, I think, Joy, the first step is just sitting, is really just taking the ability for, you know, just using that ability for you to get quiet. Now, I know a lot of us have busy minds, right, especially all of us A-types. So sometimes that can be harder than it appears to be. And many people think, oh, I can't meditate. I can't do it. My mind goes all over the place. But the truth is, it's really more of the discipline to come to that practice each and every day. And if your mind's busy, you just recognize, boy, my mind's busy. And that's where you bring in that air element. You do some more deep breathing. And that really is the way in which to begin your practice. The more that you sit and be quiet and listen to your spirit, like me, like that time I was just too busy, I couldn't listen. Once I started listening, boy, did I learn a lot about myself. And that actually will help you also to grow your intuition. But they're all tools. All of these things, there's tools you can learn about. You don't have to be gifted. You don't have to be special. We all have these abilities. So you just start training them. That's how we do it. Terry, can you remind everyone of your, your website? Yes, it's, um, it's my name, Terry Ann Hyman, all one word, T-E-R-R-I-A-N-N-H-E-I-M-A-N.com. And on Facebook, it's the Empowered Spirit Circle. Yeah. And Instagram, you can find everything. I do a lot on Instagram these days. Yeah. And I will be posting a little bit into the LinkedIn too, as well. I saw y'all shared a post. I shared it too. And out of curiosity, are you doing any personal one-on-one -on -one sessions even during COVID? I am doing one-on-one -on -one private mentoring. Yes, I do. I'm starting to fill up for the fall. I work on seasons because all of this work is very important for us to be present to where we are. And I just, I know how much it's helped me, you know, look at my own life. So I do work by season. So if you are interested, you can definitely reach out. I have a, um, a complimentary call that you can get on the phone with me and we can chat about it. But I am starting to fill those up for this next, um, I work in season, so three months privately. Yeah. And how does one sign up for your um, upcoming boot camp? So if you go to my website, I see someone, Allie just posted it. Thank you, Allie. There'll be a boot camp on there and you just click on the link 
Yeah, and then just make sure once you click that you go into the Facebook group. And then I have a fairy godmother to remind you, you can sign up for that and get all those great things. But it really is, it's a week of tons of content. You'll definitely learn about yourself. I have fun in there. We have a great group of people that have just now joining to be in there as well. And you get to learn more about who you are and how you process your energy. Because I think most of us get away from that. We don't recognize that we're taking in energy. We don't recognize how we process. Are we seeing? Are we hearing? Are we feeling? Those are what we call the clairs. And I will be going over that. Like, how do you know if you're clairvoyant? How do you know if you're clairaudient? So I'll be going over all of that in the boot camp. It's really fun. It's a fall intuition boot camp. Um, we have another question. Where do you get your inspiration from? Mother Earth. Mother Earth, let me tell you, I did a lot of sitting with her this whole COVID thing and just like, how am I doing? What am I doing? And I asked the questions because when we sit and get quiet, that's where we find that inspiration. That's in spirit, right? Inspiration, in spirit. And so we get an idea. I'm also very creative. I'm, I'm an artist. I admit I'm an artist. I've tried to hide it for years, but I'm an artist. But my, my trouble can be like too many ideas. And that's not very helpful either. Actually, that's where tapping comes in, my emotional freedom technique, because it helps to ground me. It's great for productivity, one thing at a time. And it always reminds me of going back to that medicine wheel, like one rock at a time. We're working on a meditation cabin out there. And um, I, one day I stood there goes, I'll never get this done. We, we moved out like 700 pounds of junk. And so my friend Paul said, well, how did you do the medicine wheel? And I had to kind of laugh because it was one rock at a time. And he's like, yeah, that's how we'll do the meditation cabin, one thing at a time. So it's a great metaphor for life. And the course correcting, to me, that was just like such an amazing concept because all too often we want to throw everything away. This isn't working. I got to start over, but just shift, just course correct a little bit and you'll be surprised at the changes that'll come forward, right? Yeah. Do you have particular authors or teachers that have guided you or that you recommend? Yes, a mile long, I do for sure. So right now I am um, a really big student and fan of Dr. Joe Dispenza's. He is amazing. He has a great book, Becoming Supernatural, that will actually give you pictures of how your brain changes when we go into meditation. Amazing, Becoming Supernatural, Dr. Joe Dispenza. He's awesome. Um, Carolyn Mace has a brand new book out. She was one of my very first teachers. I don't know the name. I can't remember right this now, right this second, but it's one of my very first ones. Um, Rebecca, what is her name? Light is the new black. I'd have to pull up my uh, reading list. But there's so many amazing teachers out there. There really are. Uh, just so many amazing things coming out right now. I'm trying to think of who else. Are they, um, do you post these on your website? Actually, I don't. I could. I post some more with my uh, private mentoring on the private mentoring site of books that I recommend. Yeah. But um, I'm trying to think. There's so many new ones that my, my Kindle list is crazy. I should pull up my Kindle because I, I read all the time. I do. And I actually on my podcast, I actually have a podcast, The Empowered Spirit Show, which you can find on all the podcast apps. You can tell your smart speaker. And I interview new spiritual authors. Recently, I just interviewed Christy Whitman, who talks about mindset. She's awesome. I interviewed um, Mark Gobin, who talks about um, the end of upside down thinking. And his brand new book is The End of Upside Down Living. He was Wall Street, Silicon Valley, and his whole life has switched and changed. So he's speaking spirituality. He was one of my newer ones recently. So there are some great interview. And I always are looking at new spiritual books to bring out as well. Deidre Hay, she's awesome. She is with... Um, her husband produced the movie, What the Bleep Do We Know? Great movie if you want to learn about quantum physics, What the Bleep Do We Know? I think you can find it on Netflix. She was just on my podcast again. You can find her on Instagram as well. She's doing some beautiful stuff. So there are so many books out there. It's just like start with one. But if you want to learn a little bit more about your own ability to change your limited thinking, Dr. Joe Dispenza, he's like top of my list right now. Yeah. And what was the title of that, that last? The yeah, he has several of them. Um, his latest one that just really has all the diagram and pictures is Becoming Supernatural. And he shares evidence and proof of people totally changing their lives. And his story too, he was in a car, he was in a bike rack, totally crushed his spine. They told him he'd never walk again. He proved them wrong. So he goes into how he did it and he talks about the brain patterns. Like that's what, why we meditate because it gets us out of that beta state and gets us into the more theta and delta that helps us to change our life. 
So he goes into that one, shows pictures and everything. He has also like the placebo effect. Um, he has several books, but his latest one, Becoming Supernatural, is amazing in the stories that he shares in that. I've seen him speak. I've seen him talk. I'm in his monthly group. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Yeah. Allie, thanks so much for finding all of these links and posting them. Yeah. You go to class soon, don't you? I still have a few minutes. <laughs> yeah. Um, Terry, let's see. Um, we do have a few minutes left. So uh, we were wondering if you could show us an example of the tapping technique. Oh, absolutely. Yes, tapping I'd love. So tapping is based on bringing up the limited fears, the limited emotions that we're feeling, bringing them forward as we tap on meridians of the body. As we bring them up, we free the energy so that we become present. Because truth is, the ego can't distinguish from something that happened in your past to being present. And we pick up these limited beliefs, these writings on our walls from like age two to seven, I think again in adolescence too, and we hold on to this. So the ego tries to protect you, not recognizing this is something that happened a long time ago. So anything that comes that happened that maybe you were called out in, in elementary school, or for me, I always talk about I was a fat child, I had a weight problem, and I was made fun of on the on the playground. So anytime anybody says anything about how I look or my weight, it's like, oh gosh, I'm, I, I'm, I'm eight years old again. But with tapping, you can remove these limited beliefs, remove the charge to it and free your energy to be in the present moment. So there's so many things that you can work with. There's so many things on a daily basis. I'll get in the shower and I'll just say, okay, what's up, Tad? What's going on? What do we need to work on today? All right. And so for me, it's kind of been that isolation energy. All right, if I'm feeling isolated, then what do I need to do? I need to get out more, call more, reach out, that kind of thing. But wherever you are on a daily basis, you can work with tapping. It's been known to work with people that have like fear of flying, fear of water, PTSD people, amazing. And even productivity. I use it a lot, like I mentioned before, I'm a very creative person, so I get overwhelmed with too many ideas, which doesn't help because what I do, I end up spending half the day taking coffee breaks because I can't seem to get going because I don't know what to do first, second, and third. So when I use it for that, I tap on my to-do list. I tap on what I need to get done and just say, okay, one thing. All I need to do is one thing. There's power in one thing. I can do one thing. And then when I finish tapping, I go do that one thing. And then generally it leads me to the other things too, but at least it gets me started. So I'll be happy to do a demonstration of the round if, some, if you want me to, April, I mean, go further. Yeah? So you wanna be my uh, echo, so to speak? Do you wanna work on, anybody wanna work on productivity? What would you like to look at? Andrea does. Oh, let's work on productivity. All right, so with productivity everybody have a lot to do today uh. all right so just notice where you are on like a scale of one to ten like you've got so much to do you don't think you're ever going to get it done and notice how that makes you feel like oh I'm never going to get it done right like oh right so where on that scale this is just subjective to know where you'll come down to where on that scale i'd say i'm a six okay so what we do is we start with the karate chop point, the side of the hand, side of the hand. It doesn't matter which you use. I generally say use your dominant hand and you're gonna tap right there and we're gonna bring up, even though I have a little bit of anxiety about being productive today, even though I don't know if I'll get everything done, you bring up the energy, you wanna really feel it. And then you also offer, I love and accept my feelings. Like I recognize I have this and I accept it because what that does is it calms the ego down from trying to overprotect you and it allows the balance of the brain to come in, both sides of the brain. And then we move from what we call point to point, bringing up all those things that are gonna get in our way of being productive. So the way that we start is here at the eyebrow point, right here. Then we come over to the side of the eye. Again, it doesn't matter which hand, which side or both, either way, it doesn't matter. Then underneath the eye, underneath the nose, on the chin. Then we drop to the collarbone. So here's your collarbone right below the collarbone. Here's where it starts getting a little silly underneath the armpits. So I tap in the shower. Top of the head. And then we continue back around. Eyebrow, side of the eye, underneath, under the nose, on the chin, collarbone, underneath the armpits top of the head. 
And as we're tapping, then we're going to be bringing up these sayings, these things that we're feeling. I like to say whatever the chatter of the mind is. Whatever we're telling ourselves, that's the script we're going to use for tapping. And that's really what my book talks about. It's like all those 21 issues that we all go through trying to live our purpose and keeps us from living the purpose. So we're tapping on the chatter of our mind. All right, so, so Andrew, you'll be my echo. And if you're following at home, you can repeat after me what I say. If you have other things that come up, maybe there's one big thing on your to-do list you don't wanna do, you can actually bring that one big thing up and say, I don't wanna make this phone call. I really don't, I'm afraid. Whatever your words are, that's what we say, use your words. And then you'll notice where you are. So everybody kind of notice where they are with their to-do list for today. I got a lot. <laughs> So just take a nice deep breath to begin and exhale out. One more time, inhale and exhale. So we start with a karate chop point and A, you'll, you'll repeat after me. So even though I have so much to do today. So even though I have so much to do today. I love and accept myself. I love and accept myself. Even though I'm feeling so overwhelmed with my to-do list, even though I'm feeling so overwhelmed with my to-do list. I accept these feelings. I accept these feelings. Even though I feel like I'm never gonna get it done. Even though I feel like I'm never going to get it done. I accept this feeling. I accept this feeling. And I choose to love and accept myself. And I choose to love and accept myself. Right here at the eyebrow point, we go from point to point. I have so much to do. I have so much to do. Side of the eye, I don't know if I'm gonna get it done. I don't know if I'm going to get it all done. Underneath the eye. I just don't want to do anything. I just don't want to do anything. Underneath the nose, but I know I need to. But I know I need to. On the chin, but I can't figure out what to do first. But I can't figure out what to do first. Much less second or third. Much less second or third. I'll just go take a coffee break underneath the arm. I'll just go take a coffee break. But I just did that. But I just did that. At the eyebrow. I keep procrastinating. I keep procrastinating. So I, I don't know why I'm doing that. I don't know why I'm doing that. Underneath the, I have so much to do. I have so much to do. Underneath the nose, why can't I get one thing done? Why can't I get one thing done? On the chin, because I have too many things to do. Because I have too many things to do. I don't know what to do first. I don't know what to do first. On the chin, on the collarbone. I don't even have a to-do list. Who am I kidding? I don't even have a to-do list. Who am I kidding? I don't fit. It's all in my head. It's all in my head. Top of the head. Maybe that's why I can't get anything done. Maybe that's why I can't get anything done. At the eyebrow. I'm just thinking about it too much. I'm thinking about it too much. And maybe if I made a list. Maybe if I made a list. Underneath the eye, I could get more done. I could get more done. Underneath the nose. Oh, but I've tried that too. I've tried that too. On the chin, I never get my list done. I never get the list done. On the cobble. Well, maybe that isn't true. Well, maybe that's not true. Maybe I always do yesterday's list first. Maybe I always do yesterday's list first. Top of the head, and then I don't think I get anything done. And then I don't think I get anything done. Because I have so much to do. Because I have so much to do. By the eye. I wish I could just get something done. I wish I could just get something done. I don't yeah, I think I could do that. I think I can do that. I could just do one thing. I can just do one thing. I'd be better than this tapping stuff. I'll be better than this tapping stuff. But the truth is, the truth is, as I tap underneath the armpit, as I tap, this tapping, this tapping affects the amygdala of the brain, affects the amygdala of the brain. And when it affects the amygdala of the brain, and when it affects the amygdala of the brain, it lowers cortisol. It lowers cortisol. It's been proven. It's been proven. It's known. It's known. And when cortisol is lowered, and when cortisol is lowered, Underneath the armpit, I find more peace. I find more peace. And become more present to my life. And become more present to my life. So as I tap. So as I tap. And bring up the emotions I feel. And bring up the emotions I feel. It helps me to let go. It helps me to let go. To be very present. To be very present. And to recognize. And to recognize. That I have lots of fun things I can do that I have lots of fun things I that can do. That are on my to-do list. That are on my to-do list. And it's just my thoughts. And it's just my thoughts. That get in my way. That get in my way. Because I know I can. Because I know I can. Choose one thing. Choose one thing. And start with that. And start with that. And let that flow. And let that flow. 
and then I can do it all over again. And then I can do it all over again. And choose the next thing. And choose the next thing. And this will keep me in a state of presence. And this will keep me in a state of presence. As it lowers my cortisol. As it lowers my cortisol. Which is the stress hormone. Which is the stress hormone. Lord knows I don't need stress. Lord knows I don't need stress. I work much better. I work much better. Finding that peace. Finding that peace. So as I continue to tap. So as I continue to tap. I can choose. I can choose. To start my to-do list. To start my to-do list. One step. One step. One thing. One thing. One rock. One rock. At a time. At a time. I choose to do this. I choose to do this. So we come back to the karate chop point. I choose to love and accept myself. I choose to love and accept myself. Release the hands down. Take a nice deep breath. And exhale. Notice how you feel. Close your eyes for a moment. See if you feel a little buzzing going on in your head. A little bit more peace and calm. That was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I did forget to mention the whole thing, so I brought it in with the tapping, but it does. It's been proven that it works on the middle of the brain, lowers the stress, lowers that cortisol. That's that state of peace. When we're in that place of peace, we're more present to what we're doing. 